Welcome to the Big Movement Podcast. If you're ready to create results and make huge strides in your business, finances, personal development, and health, then you're in the right place. Pushing past excuses and powering through procrastination can be a challenge alone. Here, you'll get the support, tools, and knowledge you need to get to the level you desire in your business and life. Let's get started with your host, Byron Ingram. And welcome to another episode of the Big Movement Podcast. And today we have a special guest. We have Ellie Bursko, who is a business coach for personal trainers and coaches, helping them to grow their businesses, expand their mindset, and become the best version of themselves so they can be able to live their ideal lifestyle. Because ultimately, it doesn't matter who someone is, it doesn't if they're a coach or someone, you need someone who's a coach themselves to help keep you moving in the right direction so you can achieve your goals. So let's give a great warm welcome to Ellie Bersko. So Ellie, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Definitely. So Tell us a little bit about yourself of how you got into this. Is It's not every day you hear someone saying, well, I coach coaches. <laughs> That's a little different. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I actually started out as a personal trainer myself uh, almost six years ago, about five and a half years ago. And that was after I had my first child and uh, I'd lost a lot of weight uh, after I had her and I wanted to help other mums to, to lose weight and make themselves a priority as well. So I, I started out doing that and I had really great success with it. Uh, I ran mum's boot camps in the parks with babysitting included and I was the first one to do that in my area. And I took that business from uh, zero to 100K in the first year and then 200 grand in under two years. And um, it was very successful and I had a lot of fun doing it. And so because of that success, I actually ended up seeing a lot of other trainers and coaches struggling. And uh, I guess from from where I started with the, the personal training, I then transferred that across to coaching because of, uh, of the need for it. And I, I wanted to help them um, not only make more money, but be able to create a better life and lifestyle for themselves like I'd done for my own family as well. Okay, and that in itself is extremely noble because it's it's going above and beyond to help more people because it doesn't matter which line of work there is. There's always people who are going to be extremely successful at it, and then there's people who they just need the right guidance to help them avoid some of the pitfalls because you found a way to make it work extremely fast. Yeah. And to be able to help others, that's very powerful to do. So, no. When you decide to go into personal training, what was it that made you well just decide to do it in the first place? I mean, of all the things to do, you know, you have you have your child there. It's like, oh, you could do well almost anything, but like hmm, personal training, why not? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I'd actually before I started my first business, I worked in call centers for five years. So I was working in sales and marketing, and and I loved it, but. I didn't want to be making, I think I was making about $600 a week, which is probably about three or 400 US, probably about 400 US or so. And um, working 40 hours a week, hardly making any money. So after I had my daughter and probably whilst I was still pregnant, these thoughts were going around my head that I wanted to uh, do something for myself because I didn't want to just have a kid and then put her in childcare full time and be working for someone else uh, that making hardly any money. So I'm very independent and I like to make my own rules. I don't like being told what to do. And uh, I, I wanted to, uh, yeah, create something of my own and also create that better life for my family. So, you know, whilst I was pregnant, I, I worked until right up until I had her. I was 39 weeks pregnant when I stopped working uh, because we literally had no money at the time. My partner's from Portugal, so he was on a tourist visa and, and not allowed to work. And ah. I, um, I, I didn't work right after I'd had my daughter, obviously. So we were living off, um, off welfare and we, we were living off $500 a week, which was hardly, hardly any money at all. Most of that went to, to rent and we couldn't afford a car. We couldn't even afford to eat meat and um, we were really struggling. And I remember one day sitting on the living room floor and just crying. Uh, we, we just received a letter 
saying that my partner's visa wasn't approved and we had to go through a whole review process. And uh, it just felt like, why does all this bad stuff keep happening to me? Right. And, and that was really my turning point. It was like, okay, well, I can sit here crying <laughs> and, um, and stay stuck or I can decide to change my life. And, and obviously I chose the second one and that was really my driving force to become successful very quickly. Wow. And that in itself is powerful because you had that moment mm. when there was two paths. You could do what you did, take massive action and create the life you want, or you could have accepted and said, oh, well, that's the reality. Mm. Yeah. And you think about how many people, that's exactly what they do. Just kind of go, well, this is what they said. So that's it. Yeah, They throw in the towel. Yeah, exactly. And I, I find um, most people do that. They live this I guess, mediocre life that they're unhappy with, but they don't change it. And they, they complain about their job or their relationship or where they live or any, anything and everything, but they don't do anything to, to change the situation. Right. And I think sometimes it comes down to something simple. The pain that they're experiencing is not greater then the pain and discomfort it takes to change yet. Mm. They didn't reach that turning point. Yeah, totally. And for people, that's so critical because as long as you still feel comfortable, like, eh, it's not that bad, and you start justifying it, you're not going to do anything different. It's just when it's the, holy crap, you've got to do something. Yeah. That's when you start looking for other solutions. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I so think how did I, you decide <laughs> oh, oh no definitely like how do you how did you decide on at that point to to go down the path you did in terms of personal training and so forth um so I guess the personal training specifically came from uh having having my daughter i I lost. I'm just going to work this out in pounds for you. Um, so I lost 29 kilos in seven months after having her, which is almost uh, 64 pounds. And I, um, I had had put on. I hadn't even put on that much in pregnancy. I lost more than what I put on, and wow. I uh, I ended up doing that quite easily because of my living situation, because of not having any money. Uh, I had no car, so I had to run everywhere to get to where I needed to go. I was lifting weights as well, and I just couldn't afford to eat very much. So it was kind of forced <laughs> weight loss. Um, hmm. But I found it easy at the time. But I saw a lot of other mums struggling with their weight. And I also saw at a deeper level, not just um, with weight loss, but they weren't putting themselves first and making themselves a priority. So I really wanted to be able to help them not only lose the weight, but take that time out for themselves. And I kind of found a gap in the market. So it was also, it was from my own journey, but it was also from that gap in the market of there was nothing else out there when I was looking for it, for mums to, to lose weight in a, an amazing community of like like-minded moms um, with also babysitting included in the parks. So all the other ones out there were they'd be pushing them in a pram whilst they're trying to work out or you'd have to join a gym. So I kind of filled that gap in the market and created an amazing community where mums could not only lose the weight but make some great friendships as well and, and take that time out for themselves. Oh, excellent. And you did something there which – it's a principle of any business to be successful. And that's identifying a need, solving a problem. And you, you notice that, that a sticking point for a lot of mothers would be, what do they do with their child when they want to go to the gym? And you solve them. So now there is no excuse or no reason why they cannot go and work out anymore. Yeah. And that becomes powerful. Yeah. Yeah, Exactly. And when did you make that transition to, instead of just doing the personal training to starting to help other personal trainers grow their business? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So 
I I had been running Power Moms. That was my first business for uh, about two years, and probably before the two year mark, I was getting a bit sick of it. Actually, I uh. um, I kind of grown a lot in that time, and I was ready for something else to help people. I guess at a deeper level. And in that second year of business, I was pregnant with my second child, and I was actually very very sick of my second pregnancy, and. I was running myself into the ground. I was running this business with 10 people working for me. I had four different boot camp locations. I was running around um, my town, Brisbane, like crazy, and in and out of hospital, very sick as well. And at the time, I had this mentality that I had to hustle all the time. And I also had a business coach that backed that up that was telling me to hustle all the time. And so... I um, I didn't realize it at the time, but I really was pushing myself too much. And I I just kind of grown on past the the boot camp and the, the mum stuff and was really wanting to expand and, and do something different. So I ended up selling that business to one of my trainers that worked for me. And I still kept doing the personal training uh, a little bit in a different business for for about a year or two after that whilst also doing the co- the business coaching. And to be honest, it's very hard to run two businesses and I don't recommend it. Uh, ever since I dropped the fitness business completely and just solely focused on the business coaching, my results have just skyrocketed. So I've actually seven times my business income in the last year um, well, within a year period, it's about a year and a half now, but within a year I did that. And not only did my income grow significantly, but I also created more balance in my life, more time, more energy, uh, more clarity, and um, everything's just improved so much since then. Now, that's incredible because to go – when you look at your journey, to go from – working in a call center <laughs> to barely ha- making ends meet there to seven yeah. xing your income and, yeah. and having more freedom of time. That's an incredible switch mm. that some people would think, well, how is that possible? Yeah. But you had to change, not just what you're doing, you had to change your mindset, the programming in your mind. What were some of those belief systems you had to change to accomplish it? Um, that's a really good question, actually. Uh, so mindset is is everything. I really, I always say to my clients that, you know, you can have all the strategy in the world, but it's not going to work if your head's not in the right space. So I've done a lot of personal development work and a lot of mindset work on myself over the last uh, almost six years now. And even before that, actually, I I always say I've done a lot of work since I've been in business, but I, I realized recently that even when I was a teenager, my mum used to buy me personal development books and we used to go and do yoga and meditation and I, I kind of grew up around the that personal development um, uh, kind of uh, thing, I guess. Uh, she, she helped me a lot with that. And, um, and I saw a counselor when I was younger, even though I didn't want to, um, when my parents <laughs> stood up, <laughs> but yeah, so I, I've been working on myself from a young age, but a lot since I started my business. And I guess with the belief systems, everyone has limiting beliefs and I still have limiting beliefs. Now everyone will always have them whenever you step up and try and take Uh, your life or your business to that next level, there's going to be things that try and hold you back, whether it's beliefs, um, fear, overwhelm, all those kinds of things. So it's a continual journey. I'll I'll always continue working on myself. And I guess some of the beliefs that I changed were things like I'm not good enough. I I think that's a big one for for most people. Um, that That I can't do it, that it's too hard that I don't have the support system, um, fear as well. Uh, so they're probably some of the big ones. And the the way that I overcame those was really from 
doing a lot of business courses and events and having coaches myself um, to be able to work on that on a one-on-one basis and also on a group basis and I guess just taking massive action myself and um, you know the the saying like feel feel the fear and do it anyway you right. can't just sit there and and go oh well I'll do that when I'm more confident or I'll do that when I'm less scared you've got to take the action to build the confidence like it's not the other way around <laughs> Right. I think that's what people get stuck on. They're waiting for that perfect moment. I'll do it when I have blank. Mm. And unfortunately, until you start taking action, it doesn't happen. Or you think about the people that say, well, I don't know enough. And they're waiting and they're in that constant learn mode instead of being in the do mode, because you're going to learn more by doing it than ever just reading about it. Yeah, Exactly. It's getting to that particular point. So when you look at your business and of how you transition it, what were some of those things that you began doing to, in terms of when you, you made that shift to seven extra income? Mm-hmm. What were some of those first steps that you took to expand your business to that point? Okay, cool. So, yeah, a lot of that change has been over the last year and a half. And uh, the first thing was, So in 2014, I had a business coach who I didn't gel with and yeah, I I learned a bit from him, but he just wasn't the right fit for me. And my business actually went downhill the the time that I was with him. So it came to the end of 2014 where I wasn't making much money at all compared to what I used to be. And I was in a really bad headspace and, you know, you can't blame, I, I never blame him or anyone else outside of me. I've got to take responsibility um, myself. So I was in a bad headspace that year and I, I knew that I was, but I just couldn't snap out of it for some reason. And so it came to the end of 2014 when I had a, co- a call with a mindset coach and that was really the catalyst that switched my mindset back on and I decided to start taking my business seriously again. And that phone call with him, I signed up to do a business retreat, which was $5,000. And I actually didn't end up going to the business retreat. He ended up canceling it oh. and, and I got a refund. Um, but it was great, even though I didn't go and I didn't learn anything from him. Just having that initial conversation switched me back on and made me Uh, It was around Christmas time, like November or December, and it made me go, okay, I've got to go and make this money now. So I made myself get committed again. I made myself switch into a a good mindset. I started taking my business seriously, and I went out and focused on sales activities and giving people value to be able to make that money to pay for that thing. So I think it's – you know, some people will want to do the cheapest thing all the time. I think it's really important to push yourself and do something, depending on where you're at, obviously, but do something that scares you that is more money because it's that higher commitment and you'll get better results and faster results. And so that was really my initial thing. And just from that, I ended up tripling my business within three months. Oh, excellent. Yeah, so that was the first thing I did. And that in itself, you, you hit something on the head there. Well, like you hit several when you look at it. Ooh. One was doing things that are, that scare you because it's outside of your comfort zone. Because you think about how many times people don't do something because it's like, oh, there's this lack of understanding or there's this fear. Well, what if it doesn't work? Well, yeah. what if it does? Yeah, yeah. And you have to embrace that. But not only that, you did something that you started taking more action. You focus on the sales activities, the things that were revenue generating. Yeah. Because if those things you weren't doing before, well, that would explain stuff instead of, well, what leads to the sales? Yeah, exactly. You know, before that, when I was in that bad mindset, I was spending my days just scrolling through Facebook. Um, And I guess the limiting belief at the time was that, I felt disconnected. I felt like I had no support, no connection, and I'm a very social person. So I was getting that need met by being on Facebook all the time, having that connection, 
when really I was just being more disconnected. (laughs) So I was, I felt, I literally felt like I was wasting my days just procrastinating and focusing on the things that uh, weren't important. And so when I switched that, everything changed. And, um, And going back to what you were just saying then as well about, just taking that action and, and focusing on committing to yourself and, and that kind of thing. I actually had a client tell me recently, he signed up with me on New Year's Eve last year. And he just told me, I didn't know this until recently, that he actually spent his last hundred dollars with me. He said, I had money wow. in my wallet to go out with my friends for New Year's. Um, but I, I, I spent my last hundred dollars in my bank account to put my deposit down to start your program. And he said that I just decided that I was going to make it work. And, you know, a lot of people can be in that position and be like, oh, I've only got a hundred dollars. I don't, I, I can't afford it right now. But he was the one that decided, no, I've got a hundred dollars. I'm going to use this and make it work. And just in the last two months, he's actually signed up 39 new clients um, because like he got results before that, but it's taken these last eight months to work on his mindset, to build things up, to be able to then get those fast results as well. Right. And that is key because sometimes I think people assume that the moment you hire a coach or the moment that you listen to said that personal development, it's instant results. Like you put in the microwave 60 seconds later, ding <laughs> results. Like, not quite. <laughs> Exactly. You know, I I do help people get very fast results. I think Mm -hmm. you can get quick wins. Uh, Right. I help a lot of people double and triple their business in the first three months. But if you do it in the wrong way, you can get burnt out and you can shrink backwards. So whilst there are quick results, there's other things that obviously take time to build up as well. Right. Exactly. You always have to go for the some of the quick wins because that keeps you motivated. Like you can do yeah. this, yeah. But then you have to build that sustainable pipeline, that sustainable system that is going to keep you fed for the long term. It's not just the quick instant gratification. Like, yeah, we got this, and now what? Yeah, exactly. And you know, I've come from that background of that hustle, hustle, hustle. Like, make a hundred sales calls a day, otherwise you're not serious, and you should go back to a day job and. Like this whole mentality from coaches I used to have, and you probably see it a lot in in the online world. I know I do even still like with Gary Vaynerchuk's a perfect example and I love him and he's so motivating, Mm -hmm. but you know, that doesn't work for everyone and they end up getting burnt out and they, they give up. And so I think I've really worked a lot over the last year, year and a half on building my business from a place of yes, making more money and helping more people, but doing it with balance and working on myself and my relationship with my partner and creating an amazing lifestyle and more time with my family rather than, okay, where's the next sale? I've got to make X amount of dollars this week. Otherwise I'm a failure or whatever. Um, It's about creating something that's, that's sustainable rather than just, push, push, push all the time. Right, exactly. And that's so vital that there's this balance between working hard in your business, but then working in yourself so you avoid the burnout. Because you look at some people that they're in that constant go, but unfortunately over time you realize they've been doing it for so long, there's nothing left in the gas tank. Yeah. And it's only a matter of time before they crash. Yeah, Totally. And I I used to do that. So up until probably last year, I would have, it was this cycle. I'd have two weeks where I'd push so hard that I'd burn myself out that on week three, I'd just be exhausted and I couldn't face the world. Right. uh, I would get sick. And you have to create that balance. Oh, Oh, go ahead. You you know, you're, you're something you have to create that balance on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I I worked a lot on that. And what was behind that was partly, partly the coaches I'd had and what I was seeing outside of me. And I guess society as well. We're grown up with being told, if you don't work hard, then you're lazy or or whatever. 
Um, but also I guess my own personality was like that all or nothing personality. And I was kind of escaping into my business and also into my, my lifting. I, I compete in powerlifting at a national level. Um, mm-hmm. so I was escaping into the gym and into my business because I wasn't dealing with things at home with my relationship with my partner and with my own mindset as well. And so when I worked on what was really, um, not going wrong, but what needed improving, I guess. Um, Mm -hmm. Then I created not only more money, like I'm making more money than I ever have and have an amazing business, but even more importantly, I created happiness and fulfillment and connection, which is more important than any amount of money in the world. Definitely. When it comes to the connection aspect and you look at those intangibles, you can't put a price tag on it. Because there's something that no matter what, you'll always have. Because you think about it, you can lose everything in the world. But if you've spent the time and energy to build up the right connections, it doesn't matter how much money or resources you have made in the past, you can recreate all of them. Yeah. Because you have a resource that someone can never take away. Exactly. And, you know, it got to that point in my relationship, to be really open and honest right now, where things weren't bad, but they weren't great. And because I've worked on myself a lot uh, and my partner hasn't, we kind Mm -hmm. of were, I felt like we were living in the same house, but just being side by side, not connected. And I really wanted to be able to grow together. And that was a big thing that was, was holding me back and making me um, a bit down in a way. And so I, I realized, look, I've got all this success and I've created this amazing lifestyle, but it doesn't matter if my relationship's going to fall apart. And so I worked a lot on on uh, making things work with, with my partner. We've been together seven and a half years now, but just making things not just kind of okay, but making them great so that we could be really happy together and um, be great role models for our kids as well. And I realized that all this external kind of uh, possessions or success or lifestyle didn't matter if we weren't happy. Right, exactly. And that is so vital when it comes to any relationship is that there has to be this synergy with the personal growth and development. Because it's something that you see from time to time that people – they end up separating because one person is growing and the other person is left behind. And you think of it like a rubber band that no matter what, it can only be stretched so far before it snaps. Yeah. And the relationship becomes the same exact way that unless you create more synergy, it will snap at some point. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's just that process. So when you were growing your business in terms of increasing it, what were some of those things that you did in the right away that resulted in tripling your revenue in that short period of time? Yeah. Uh, so one of the things I did, and I guess it's more, uh, I guess it's mindset and strategy, I guess, but I wrote up on a whiteboard all the things that I wanted to pay for, like some goals, I guess, for the next 12 months. And it was things that I wanted to actually buy. So I wanted to go on a trip to Fiji. So I wrote Fiji flights, Fiji spending money, Fiji uh, accommodation. And I wrote down next to each one of those how much the the exact dollar amount of how much that was going to cost. I wrote down different courses I wanted to do and uh, different sorts of travel. I love travel. So all of that was on the board. And it ended up being about $30,000 altogether. And so from then taking action, and I guess I'll talk more about the strategy in a sec, but um, from then seeing those things on the board, some of them, one of them was to go over to the US actually. And that was about five or $6,000 in just in flights. And I was writing these things up and Fiji was not very expensive. So I was like, yeah, that's going to happen. That's easy. But the US, I was like, I'm not even earning that a month at the moment. Like in my lowest month, I wasn't even earning six grand. And it's like, okay, I don't know how that's going to happen, but I'm going to write it up on there anyway. And so those 12-month goals and that $30,000, 
I actually ended up paying them off within three months and achieving all of them um, that I'd had down there for 12 months. Um, wow. the, the only thing I didn't do actually was get my teeth um, fixed and I, I want to get some dental work done and it's like travel just ended up being more fun and exciting. Than <laughs> <that>. <laughs> like travel or teeth. Yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was the only thing, but the rest, I, I ticked it all off very quickly. And I guess that comes back to the mindset in knowing what you want and then going out and, and having, having a focus, you know, someone told me once money needs a home. And so if you're earning money just for the sake of going, oh, I've got to make another sale or I've got to have X amount of dollars in the bank, it's boring. But if you know that it's going into creating that lifestyle that you want, then that was really my drive. And right. from from a strategy perspective, I just I stopped scrolling through Facebook every day and wasting my time and I started focusing on the priorities so the three things I tell my clients to do every day is focus on your mindset, marketing, and sales. And so I guess mindset comes back to getting your head in a good space first thing in the morning. So that might be doing some journaling and writing about maybe a limiting belief you have and overcoming that, or it might be setting some intentions and goals for the day. Um, you might do a meditation or listen to a podcast or a video to pump you up. Um, so that's like getting your head in the good space to then take the action, not jumping straight into the action with a bad mindset. Um, mm -hmm. Then once your head's in a good space, marketing is like any kind of marketing or putting some kind of content out there, whether it's a post on social media, a podcast, a video, whatever it is. And then sales is actually having conversations with people, whether it's on the phone or over Facebook chat or putting a sales page out there or something that's actually going to be like a dollar producing activity. And I think if you've And those are just at the core of it. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I think if you focus on those three things first thing in the day, you're going to be moving yourself forwards with actual productive activities rather than what most people do is they jump straight on and they're scrolling through Instagram or Facebook and they their brain is straight into just – um, doing things that are procrastinating and, and holding them back or they, they're focusing on admin kind of tasks all day and not actually doing the things that are productive. Right. And some of that comes down to that mindset of people who they're looking at their day, they have to – and there's that fear-based thing like, well, what if I don't succeed? So they do stuff – that prohibits them from doing the things that matter. So they keep putting up like, oh, I'll just do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. And tomorrow soon it becomes next week and it becomes next month and then ultimately becomes next year and they never do it. Yeah. First, just tackling them because you think about it. If you take on your mindset first thing in the morning, you've established the energy, the flow of the whole day. And then by doing the marketing, you know the things you need to do. And then ultimately having a sales conversation, you could get the things that are the hardest thing that you need to do done so quickly, you yeah. now have more free time to do the stuff you really want to do. Yeah, exactly. And if you can do those scary things first, my, my mindset coach calls it safe and unsafe activities. And so the safe activities are the things that you just do naturally. They're easy. Um, and most people do that. They just focus on the easy stuff. But if you focus on the unsafe activities, the things that you have a bit of fear around, which might be making sales calls or networking with people or standing on a stage in front of people or whatever it is, those scary activities, no matter how big or small, if you focus on doing at least one of those every day and do that first thing, then the rest of the stuff's going to feel easier. But you're also building right. confidence. And you mm. Well, you, you mentioned something there, like, obviously you're building confidence, but cool. to do just at least one scary thing a day, why not? Yeah, yeah. And it sets you apart from your competition and all the other people out there that are just doing the easy stuff. So you'll you'll get better results just from, from doing the things that others aren't willing to do. Right. And if you look at it, 
it doesn't take much because you think about the competition so many times because people are doing the easy things and they're not even doing them that well. Yeah. The the bar's not very high, so it doesn't take much to begin standing out in a crowded marketplace. Yeah. Exactly. Now, what are the when you think about obviously you're talking about like with mindset with journaling and things, and then in terms of the marketing concepts out there, what have you found to be most effective as you're working with your clients to help them get their name out there more? Yeah, sure. Um, so I really think a lot of people I see, uh, they, they think that, okay, I want to start marketing. So I'm going to put up a Facebook post or a Facebook ad and they're just, um, they're just yelling out like, buy my stuff basically. And it's like a promotion, like, Hey, I've got a boot camp, and it's X amount of dollars sign up now. And that doesn't work. What you need to do is more so come from a value perspective. So if you're just yelling like bye, bye, bye all the time, but no one knows you yet, then it's just not going to have the same effect. And yeah, you might get one or two people sign up, but it's not very effective. What the main, the main purpose of marketing is to get people to know you, like you, and trust you, and then they'll buy from you. So to be able to build that, you've got to get really, really clear on your target market and, and be quite specific. Now, that doesn't mean that you won't help people outside of that if they're like, say your target market is 25 to 35 year olds. Um, a 36 year old comes your way, you're not going to say, no, go away. <laughs> right. It's just having that clear picture within your head so that you know your messaging when you, when you put your content out there and your marketing out there, um, you need to have that clarity, which most people don't. So that's the first thing. And then once you have clarity on your target market and, and also know yourself as well, because your target market is going to be who you were probably a few years ago because we relate, right. people relate to our own journey. And so you put that message out there, um, work on yourself as well. And you, when you're putting that, that content out there, it's talking about your own journey, the obstacles you've overcome, the successes you've had, maybe client results. If you've, if someone's got clients, and just little tips uh, and helping people to overcome things that they're struggling with so that they can either help themselves or hopefully they'll then sign up with you because they've overcome that obstacle or, or they need more help with it. And so right. it, it's really about telling stories and giving that consistent value. Most people aren't consistent. They'll put a Facebook post up every once in a while. You need to be posting daily. And you don't need to post a million times a day, just post once or twice a day. But um, I really believe in starting with one thing, for example, Facebook, getting consistent with that, doing it well, and then adding on from there. There's, there's so many different platforms and so many different things you could be doing. Uh, but if you try and do it all at once, it just gets overwhelming and you're not going to stick with it. Right. Exactly. And they, that's where so many people, they get stuck at. Is you know they listen to the gurus in the world say, oh, you've got to be on Instagram, oh, you got to be on Twitter, you got to be on Snapchat, you got to be on YouTube, and the list goes on and on and on. Before you know it, someone is stuck because they don't know what to do. Instead of start with one, yeah, and then master it exactly, and then and only then move on to another one because if you start with the one that has the largest amount of your ideal client on why would you start with one like well there's a couple people that are there and there are other people saying they've had great success <laughs> well, well you, you know i like to jokingly say if you want to let's say sell a bunch of guys uh, i don't know barbecue equipment mm. probably doing it on pinterest is not your ideal place to do it at <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know you need to know where they are hanging out at yeah exactly exactly and then get in front of them online, both online and offline. So choose that one thing, get good at it. But yeah, you find out where your ideal clients are both online and offline and get in front of them. And that's what I did really well with Power Moms with the, the bootcamp business. 
I I literally came from nothing and I had no money to spend on marketing. So I got myself out there as much as I could on, in, a, in a way that was free. So mm-hmm. I used to talk to mums in the park. I'd use my daughter as like a segue to, to, build, <laughs> to build rapport and start chatting to them about their kids and then tell them that I had a boot camp and ended up getting their phone number and calling them later on and talking about their goals. Um, I used to do that in parks and in cafes and kids' play centres. Um, I ran seminars, free seminars, uh, where I, I talked to them about a particular topic and then signed them up at the end. I posted on Facebook consistently. Um, uh, I, yeah, I did lots of free things in the start. And then when I did, um, end up kind of rustling some money together, I did a baby expo, which was literally the biggest thing that grew my business. And expos are amazing. Oh, really? Now, how did the baby expo really grow it? So the thing with expos, you want to go somewhere where your ideal clients are there, but your target market isn't there. So, for example, for someone who's a personal trainer, you wouldn't go to a fitness expo because it's full of other personal trainers, whereas the baby expo was full of other product-based businesses, not really something that I was doing. So I think there was maybe one or two other personal trainers there, but most of it was other like nappies and toys and things like that. So there was 17,000 mums through the doors on the first year that I did it. It was a big expo and it was expensive. It cost me about $2,000 for the stand, which like was a lot of money to me back then. And I ended up just taking action and, and paying it off and making the money, taking that risk. And I had a competition to generate leads whilst I was there. I wasn't trying to sign people up on the day. Uh, It was over three days. And the first year I did it, I ended up uh, generating over 650 leads. Um, The second year I did it, I got over 800 within the three days. And the third year I did it, I got over 1,000. So it was great for generating leads, but it was also great for networking with other businesses that were there and just as a branding exercise to get my name out there. So I find that, you know, when people, uh, people like to have these different touch points with you. So if they saw me, they might have driven past in the park and saw me there. Then they were seeing me on Facebook. They were seeing me um, in, uh, I was advertising online with a, it's called Brisbane Kids. And then they saw me at the expo as well. There were all these different touch points where they were getting to know my brand and starting to trust me that they were like, oh, yeah, I've seen you here, here, and here. I want to sign up now. Oh, excellent. And you hit upon something very important there, and that's that brand awareness. Because the people who are following the the buy my stuff philosophy, they're missing out on the number of contact points that because people have different – you know, of buy points. Some that might happen after two or three contacts. Others, it could be 10 or 12. Yeah. But if you're just going for that one shot deal, it's a very hard road to climb. Yeah, exactly. And I was actually at a social media event recently learning more about um, the current trends. And I think he said, uh, I'm terrible with numbers, so don't quote me, but I think, <laughs> I think he said these days it's something like 11 or 12 touch points. Like it was a lot more than it used to be. And, oh, yes. And so people, I think people are a bit jaded. Like they've seen, especially in the fitness industry, they've seen all these before and after photos and they don't know what's true anymore. Um, even in business coaching and, and marketing and I guess the online world, they see all these coaches and they're like, oh, have they really got those results? Have they really made that much money? Um, like people are skeptical. And so they need to know who you are and really gel with your personality and your brand uh, and know that you can help them to be able to take that step. Some people will just sign up straight away and they're awesome. They're, they're fast decision makers. And other people need to kind of know you a little bit more to be able to take that step. Right, exactly. And that is so critical in today's world because with the barrier to entry of being able to market being so much lower, 
it's increased the amount of time it takes to build the trust in many cases because people have had a bad experience here or there where it's like, oh, I'm going to invest in this program. They realize, well, that was crap. Yeah. Yeah. And now they are hesitant. Like, well, the last one didn't work. So why should I invest in yours? Mm, exactly. And that's why I always try to stand out from, from all the other coaches out there and just really over deliver. I, I give so much to my clients. I, I have different levels of my programs. And even in my low end, I, I make sure I over deliver at every point because, you know, I've had some great coaches, but I've also, also I found with all the coaches I've had, I don't think any of them give as much value as I do. Um, yeah. I, I really over deliver a lot. And that's because of the experiences that I've had, but also just genuinely really want to help people. And I think if you can do that, you'll stand apart from from everyone else as well. Right. Oh, definitely. It doesn't take much to stand apart from people. So as we wind things down a little bit here, tell us a little bit about the programs that you have that you're offering to help, especially personal trainers in their business. Yeah. So um, a lot, most of my clients are personal trainers, but I do have some coaches as well. So I have... I've helped business coaches, life coaches. Um, I have an amazing client who runs an acting academy in England, and she's just doing amazing things. Um, her business is so fun and exciting. She's uh, about to open in London, and she wants to open in, in Vegas as well. And she's on national TV and in, in the magazines, and she's just doing amazing things. So it's great to have a, a mixture of clients, not just – personal trainers, but a mixture of different industries, which is really fun. Right. And um, I have a variety of, of programs. So I have a low end offering, which a lot of people start at because, you know, I don't believe in just going, okay, yep. The first thing that you do with me is thousands of dollars. And some people aren't at that stage yet. So right. I help people from a basic foundational level uh, with, I have a, an online mastermind and that's where I, I help them to really take those first steps. And I help with a mixture of mindset and business strategies and so the marketing and sales and time management side of things. And it's just an amazing community of like-minded people. There's uh, 62 people in that group at the moment. And everyone's just really, really amazing and supportive of each other. Uh, and I make sure I just add amazing people in there who gel with each other. I don't want people who aren't, aren't the right fit in there basically. And so that, that one is purely online with the Facebook group, two group calls a month and uh, a membership site with uh, a lot of content as well. And then I have different levels, which includes online aspects plus, plus uh, one-on-one coaching with me on the phone. And then I also have a high end VIP mastermind, um, which basically they get everything from me. They get multiple retreats through the year. Uh, I just came back from Thailand running a five day business retreat in Thailand, actually the other week. And, um, I run retreats and, um, VIP days and, uh, lots of different cool things throughout the year as well. So the way I've set it up, it's very, it's very hands off where I can work from wherever I want in the world. I'm not kind of stuck to one location or stuck on the phone all day, every day. Um, but then I also do these things that are face to face through the year that really fill me up and make me feel good and allow me to travel and have fun as well. But I also get people just fast, very, very fast results by doing those things as well. Um, like literally at the Thailand retreat, I got people, I, I let go, I help people let go of a lifetime worth of stuff. Um, literally some of them within, within seconds and some of them within an hour of mindset coaching. And it was just amazing the transformations that occurred there. And it was such a cool experience. So I want to do that a lot more now too. Oh, that's excellent. Especially when you can see the transformations in people and know that they're on that path to just embrace their true greatness. Yeah. It, it was amazing to see it in front of my eyes, like so quickly. I had one client who was feeling depressed before he came and he literally went from depressed to really happy and seizing opportunities. 
um, within a day, the first day of the retreat. And he's now got job opportunities overseas that he's he's going to move overseas within the next few months. And I had another client let go of things from from his past and really be able to move forwards. Um, another client's made $8,000 already this month um, and put a program out there that she wouldn't have put out there before the retreat, which was talking about binge eating because of her past, which she was too scared to talk about before. And another resigned from her $100,000 um, uh, like high paying, uh, corporate job. Uh, she's resigned from that now, put her letter of resignation in just after the retreat and yeah. she's working on her business full time now. And within the week after the retreat, she ended up making more in her business that she's doing on the side than she was in her day job before she's even left. So, and that was just from releasing wow. fear, doing some, doing some NLP, some mindset work. I released fear for her and then she was mm -hmm. able to take that action from a place of excitement and, and letting go of that fear around that decision, which was really cool. Oh, that's excellent. That's really powerful. So where can people go online to learn more about you and what programs you offer? Uh, so I have uh, my, my Facebook page is Ellie Bursco PT Mentoring. So that's B-U-R-S-C-O-U-G-H. I also have a free group on Facebook, which is called the Community of Kick-Ass Action Takers. So anyone who's listening is welcome to, um, to join that for ongoing support and tips and that kind of thing. And I also have my website, which is uh, www.ptmentoring.com.au, I think it is. Let me just double check. I should know my website. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Um, so I, I don't really have like my packages and things like that up there because I do like to talk to people one-on-one uh, -on -one to make sure they're the right fit first. I don't let just anyone in, um, but they can connect with me in those ways and kind of start a conversation and let me know that they were listening um, to, to your podcast. Oh, excellent. Well, I want to thank you for coming on to and sharing your knowledge and wisdom of how you help people, because there are some serious nuggets of wisdom that you shared that if people take action on, they can have a profound impact in their lives. Yeah, totally. Thanks so much for having me. It's, it's been great. I love doing this kind of thing. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Big Movement Podcast today. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Now that you've surely been inspired to take your entrepreneurial career and business to the next level, you can stop by the website and get more. And if you're ready to boost your business brand, be sure to grab your free report, Seven Easy Steps to Build Your Brand Today.